Hello, it's uh, Paul Beckwith. I'm at the corner of Belmont and Bristol in Old Ottawa South, um, in the region where the uh, spring um, snow melt and the <coughs> excuse me the uh, high rainfall levels is uh, flooding uh, the end of Belmont near the Rideau River. Um, lots of people's basements, I'm sure, are being flooded, and uh, people have, have had to leave their houses, I believe. So what I'm actually going to talk about today in this setting is uh, is uh, sea level rise over, say, the next hundred years. So the uh, previous uh, IPCC report from 2007 had a figure of about uh, it, it it had the, the projections of the of the climate models um, had sea level rise pegged at a between uh, I think it was 20 something like 28, 26 to, to 58 millimeters uh, by 2100, something like that. Um, the uh, latest IPCC Working Group 1 report that just came out in September of 2013 had uh, those numbers slightly higher, but uh, not significantly. Um, and uh, some papers, uh, some recent papers have had that number approaching one meter, 1.1 meter. I think if you talk to uh, sea level rise experts, that um, that number, you know, about a meter by 2100 is sort of the, uh, probably the consensus view of the scientists that are working um, in that area specifically, doing the, doing measurements, doing modeling, doing projections. But the big uh, factors that affect sea level rise are, of course, the Greenland ice sheet. And there's about six or seven meters of embedded sea level rise, global sea level rise, in the Greenland ice sheet, and also the Antarctic ice sheet. Now, people generally divide the Antarctic ice sheet into the West Antarctic ice sheet and the East Antarctic ice sheet. The West Antarctic ice sheet is largely grounded on uh, bedrock that is below sea level. So, and there's, uh, in the West Antarctic ice sheet, there's at least four or five meters of, of uh, water tied up in that ice sheet, should it melt, that global sea level rise um, amounts. So, um, James Hansen, for years he's been saying he's, uh, you know, based on the models and based on sea level melt rates, and, or based on um, ice sheet melt rates, He's been saying that uh, he expects about up to five meters of uh, sea level rise by uh, 2100. Um, now, if you just do some very simple calculations, a number of years ago I just uh, said, okay, what's the doubling period of, of uh, the melt rate of the Greenland ice sheet, for example? And, uh, you know, people have said, I don't know what the consensus view is, but people are talking about uh, it taking on the order of two to three hundred years uh, for that to, to melt. Um, and uh, this was a while ago. This was around two, you know, seven or about, around a decade ago. Um, but if you look at the how often the uh, melt rate from Greenland uh, increases, how quickly it increases, um, the, uh, I came up with a doubling period for the melt rate of about uh, any, about five to seven years, something like that. So, so um, what that would mean is if it doubles in seven years and then doubles again in seven after that and doubles again after that, this is an exponential um, curve. So the, it's, it's an exponential rise in melt rate. So if you take that 300 years and that's estimated, you know, to melt. Let's say it, the baseline is to take 300 years to melt at a certain doubling rate. Well, in the seven years, the, the melt rate is doubled, so then you would argue that it would take only 150 years. And then in another seven years, it would double, so then it would only take 75 years. So if you add all those numbers up, add all those years up, it gave me a figure of about 2070 something like that, for the thing to be uh, completely gone, um, just from this simple exercise. Now, if uh, 
Greenland, so, so that would be a, about a seven meter sea level rise. But let's say the doubling rate slows down. There's other factors coming in. Let's be very conservative. So let's say that Greenland only produces about three and a half meters of sea level rise by that type of time frame, 2070. Maybe, you know, give, give some, um, be a bit more conservative in the numbers. Well, we know from the, from the uh, Pliocene about three million years ago that the sea level was six to 10 meters higher. Um, and it's also believed that about half of that rise was due to the Greenland melt and the other half was due to West Antarctic ice sheet melt. So that would be about three meters each for if, if the rise was six meters or five meters each if the rise was uh, 10 meters in the Pliocene about three million years ago. So if Greenland uh, melt rates are, you know, if Greenland causes the three and a half meter sea level rise by about 2070, um, according to the simple calculation, then one could expect an equal, you know, I think it would be a reasonable assumption to say that there's an equal match of rise from um, Antarctica. So, so that's where I get the number um, of about seven meters of uh, sea level rise by, uh, uh, by 2070. So um, what has sea level done in the past? Well, the, the, rise, uh, the rate of rise has been about two millimeters per year um, up until about a decade or so ago. Um, and uh, the, uh, in the last uh, decade or so, um, the average has been more like about 3.4 millimeters per year. Now, what was interesting is um, we had a, a powerful La Nina several years ago, um, and the sea level actually fell about five millimeters over a year. Um, now, the cause was that the La Nina caused tremendous amounts of rainfall over places like Australia and parts of Asia. And that took, it took a while, that water, so that water was evaporated from the oceans primarily, transported to fall over the land in Australia um, and other places, and then it stayed on the land. So that effectively caused a sea level drop of five millimeters. And that was completely unexpected and surprising to uh, sea level experts. They hadn't seen that before. It doesn't show up in the uh, records that we have. Um, so, but since then, the water has been draining off the land back into the ocean. So the sea level rise in the last uh, two, two years or so has been about 10 millimeters per year. Um, so I think it would be very interesting to do a study because rapid sea level rise like that, um, you, you know, rapid sea level rise like that, um, you know, you can actually compare it to what happened when the uh, last, when we exited the last ice age. Um, it's believed that rates were about 10 times higher. Um, they were about the 50 millimeter per year type, type level. Um, so, you know, 50 millimeters per year, um, that's about, uh, you know, and that, and that was that was over hundreds of years uh, and caused a tremendous rise. So, so in the paleo records, I always like to look in the paleo records for precedence. And in the paleo records, we do have um, periods where sea level rise was was very rapid, and that can also be correlated to time periods when there was very high um, seismic activity. There was very high earthquake activity. There was a lot of um, volcanoes and so on. And Bill McGuire has studied the, uh, these uh, geophysical um, effects um, from, I mean, think about it. You're putting a huge mass of water over the land. It pushes the land down, you know, it can destabilize things. So it'd be very interesting to do a correlation of sea level rise over the last uh, few decades, for example, especially with the uh, five millimeter drop and then, and then huge 10 millimeter rises. Um, and it would be interesting to correlate that with uh, um, seismic activity, um, you know, to see whether it was related to what seems like an increase in uh, 
in earthquake activity around the around uh, various parts of the planet in the last uh, several years. So, so that would be. I haven't done that myself. It would be very interesting to uh, you know to investigate that hypothesis. Um, and it's also important to remember that that uh, sea level rise isn't the same everywhere around the world. It seems obvious to people that it should be, but uh, some regions have land subsidence where the land is sinking down. For example, river delta, deltas, the weight of the silt is making is, is heavy, it's pushing the land downward. You also have areas of uplift where there were ice sheets on the land in the last ice age, they've left, but they pushed the land down significantly and now the weight's not there, so the land is rising. Um, so there's lots of local or regional effects. And also, you know, as Greenland uh, ice caps melt, that pulls a lot of water. The, the, the mass, anytime there's a big mass, it pulls a lot of water towards it. So Greenland actually melting significantly could actually cause, uh, you know, th those effects could actually reduce the sea level rise right next to Greenland, for example. So there's lots of these effects, um, but I'm really talking about sort of global average values. So, so that sort of, uh, you know, back of the envelope calculation gives seven meters by 2070. Um, you know, Hansen's five meters by 2070. You know, the mainstream science view is about a meter by 20, 2100, something like that. So uh, I'll stop there. Thank you.